everybody, hope you're great today. Um, I just wanted to do a quick video um, uh, about the King of the North and the King of the South in the uh, Prophecy of Daniel. I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about that because, I mean, it's a book I've read, I mean, particularly this prophecy I've read over and over again until I've got a headache. I mean, I, I, who, who of us who would not love to have crystal clear clarity on this prophecy. But at the end of the day, we know that that is not going to happen until the prophecy has been fulfilled. And, uh, okay, it's good to want to know and understand these things and keep trying to look into them. But, yeah, what Watchtower's presented recently, uh, you know, I believe they've got it completely wrong. Um, if I could start with a scripture at John chapter 4, verses 10 to 15. Yeah, that's uh, the account of the woman at the well. That's John chapter 4 and verses 10 to 15. And it says there, um, In answer, Yeshua said to her, If you had known the free gift of God, and who it is that says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, she said to him, sorry, she said to him, Sir, you have not even a bucket for drawing water, and the well is deep. From what source, therefore, do you have this living water? You are not greater than our forefather Jacob, who gave us the well, and who himself, together with his sons and his cattle, drank out of it, are you? In answer, Yeshua said to her, Everyone drinking from this water will get thirsty again. Whoever drinks from the water that I will give him will never get thirsty at all, but the water that I will give him will become in him a fountain of water, bubbling up to impart everlasting life. So basically, from that account there, the woman was obviously thinking water, H2O water from the well, that they were at. They'd come there, they were thirsty, they wanted to refresh themselves. Christ was talking on a completely different plane. He was on a spiritual level, level talking about spiritual waters that would sustain life eternally. He also speaks similarly at John chapter 6, verses 6. 56 and 56. That's John chapter 6, verses 55 and 56, where it says that, um, For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. And 56 says, He that feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood remains in union with me, and I in union with him. So from these verses, we can see how Christ um, used physical, material things that we are familiar with. That obviously, we, we, we could understand um, straight away um, what he was talking about. Um, but, I mean, did we? Did, did the disciples, did the woman at the well really grasp the spiritual significance that Christ was trying to relate by use of these uh, fleshly, physical things. Um, no, she didn't. Um, John chapter 6 and verse 63 says, um, It is the spirit that is life-giving. The flesh is of no use at all. This is the point. The sayings that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. So, um, when we bear in mind the way that Christ spoke um, in a spiritual manner, we're able then to interpret, for example, Matthew chapter 24 with spiritual eyes. Um, he said at Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6, You are going to hear of wars and reports of wars. See that you are not terrified, for these things must take place, but the end is not yet. Uh, is not yet. So, um, we have the context of war, but 
on a spiritual plane, yeah, we can examine his further words in the in the sense of a spiritual warfare. Um, Matthew chapter twenty four is not talking about literal warfare, just as Christ was not speaking about literal water or it is literal flesh and blood. Um, nation will rise against nation, uh, he, he said. And the nation that is talking of here is the same nation that's mentioned at First uh, Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Those who would be his followers. And there would be um, food shortages. That's spiritual food shortages. We can see that in Christ, Christian churches throughout the world, there is a shortage of spiritual food. And certainly there's a shortage of spiritual food in Watchtower. Um, earthquakes happened in Watchtower. 1914, many fell away. 1975, the early 1980s. Um, and even we could say with the uh, change of the, the thought of the uh, generation, uh, teaching. All these things um, led many to uh, spiritual death. Um, verse 9, those within the organisation would be objects of hatred in, um, in, in Christendom in general actually, not just in Watchtower. When you disagree with what the te leaders of the church put forth, then you, you, you would be hated for putting Christ first and not the organisation that you belong to. Um, and you will be delivered up to tribulation and will kill you in a spiritual sense. And this is brought out again in the book of Revelation um, where um, those who follow Christ would be attacked and Satan would make war with them. Um, many will be stumbled and will betray one another, yet yeah within uh, particularly the watchtower of uh, the organization of watchtower um, you would be handed in to their elders as an apostate if you spoke um, out to even a close friend a close relative you would be handed in you would be betrayed to the elders false prophets all of those who follow watchtower leadership and uh, teach what they teach are false prophets increases of lawlessness um, another scripture speaks of the man of lawlessness, yeah, and this is a, speaking about in a similar um, plane here. It's speaking about um, lawlessness in a spiritual sense, of falling away from what's in God's word and of promoting, uh, I don't know, of man's own um, standards, wrong standards as God's. Um, the love of the great and number will cool off. That certainly happened in Watchtower. The love of the great and number is for the governing body, and their love for Christ has cooled off. And uh, the Jehovah Witnesses love to promote the fact that they have taught the good news of the kingdom in all inhabited earth. Well, no, they haven't. They've taught this news of only 144,000 going to heaven, and it's rubbish. It's rubbish. It's, it, they have no scriptural basis to teach that based on a couple of scriptures in Revelation that's a highly symbolic book um, so yeah we must view what Christ said prophetically um, with spiritual eyes and and not take it so literally there's always been lawlessness there's always been wars this was a particular type of warfare that he was talking about that would happen amongst those professed to be his disciples. And when we look at the book of Daniel, we again were given a context of a nation. Um, we conclude, I believe, in verse 4 with the offspring of Alexander the Great. And then in verse 5, there seems to be a sudden change to this king of the south. Who is he? Who is this king of the south? We're left guessing. But from verse 5, um, it sets the scene because it says um, 
it's one of his princes. So his, his prince, the prince his is Christ. The prince is talking about here is Christ and ones who profess to be his followers. And these will prevail against him, the prince, Christ, and will rule with extensive dominion greater than that one, Christ's, the prince, ruling power. And this is what's happened in Watchtower. The governing body rules with greater power and authority than Christ himself, than Father. Um, so the point, basically, that I want to make is that the King of the North and the King of the South is the same as 1 Peter 2 verse 9. It is those ones professed to be of this holy nation. God's ancient people, um, his ancient nation became divided into a northern ten tribe and a southern two tribe kingdom. And in the last days, those professing to be of this holy nation, of God's kingdom, will be a de divided nation, will be a nation at war. And um, this is what's happened um, in Christendom in general. They're at, uh, involved in this spiritual war with different, different beliefs. Um, but just holding in a watchtower, even within a watchtower, um, there's this battle going on between the leadership and um, ones who uh, disagree with them. Um, yeah, basically, I think that's... A, I don't know if I've made that particularly clear, but the, the point that I really wanted to make from this video was that I think that people are wasting their time trying to interpret the book of Daniel in events of the world. And again, the same with the book of Matthew, chapter 24. People have tried to compare that to events that have happened in the world. Matthew, chapter 24, and the book of Daniel, the king of the north and the king of the south. This is conflict that goes on um, in the time of the end amongst those who profess to be true Christians. And the king of the south is important because... I believe it, it, it applies particularly to Watchtower. They have the basics, the foundations of God's word correct, just as the uh, temple for true worship in ancient times was in, in the southern uh, two tribe uh, kingdom. Jehovah Witnesses um, have accepted the truth that Christ has established in the last days. There's no Trinity, there's no hellfire. There's a heavenly kingdom, there's going to be a paradise earth, there are ransom sacrifice, all of these, they're just very simple baby milk elementary truth of the word. And they are taught in Watchtower. They were not established through Watchtower, they were established in the mid to uh, late um, 19th century. Um, and Watchtower ad ad adopted these beliefs. Um, they belong to Christ and I believe in fact they've been stolen by Watchtower they've been captured with, within Watchtower and um, they must be set free and very soon they will be but um, yeah I hope I haven't waffled on I mean it's such a deep subject to tackle I mean it hurts my head and it makes me feel um, way down at the thought of trying to uh, interpret such a, a deep prophecy scripture by scripture you know um, paragraph by paragraph it's so deep and it's so kind of obscure there's certain things that pop out like those acting against the holy covenant which watchtower certainly done um, in limiting the 144 those with a heavenly hope to 144,000 um, they are certainly um, uh, touching the Holy Covenant by uh, banning everybody, those with a, her a earthly hope, from partaking of their emblems. Um, that is really uh, uh, trashing the Holy Covenant. But, um, yeah, th these things, they have to have a relation to a congregation of people and nothing to do with 
worldly nations. The king of the north and the king of the south is, um, it, again, it's not two separate groups. A, an individual, say like myself, at one point, when I believed 144,000 was a literal number, I would have been one king. And when I came away from that and made uh, a, a opposition to Watchtower, then I became an, a, another king. Don't ask me which, you know, um, I don't think you're supposed to decipher which, who um, is a particular king or when you were a particular king. The, the point is there's going to be a conflict going on within the congregation and within Christ's true followers as individuals until they learn to fully follow him and follow his, in his footsteps and not in the footsteps of men. I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Bye.